All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeline or CRM, joining you as usual from a sunny San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Hilman Sori, who is over in probably an equally sunny, if not even hotter, Miami. How are you doing, Hilman? <laughs> I'm doing great. Nice to see you, John. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And Hillman is the co-founder of Coach CRM and Close, Close, Close Loop uh, investor, eight-time author, speaker, podcast host. And what we're going to talk about today is the most powerful revenue advantage you can have. And that is a coaching methodology. And this is uh, this is a little dear to my heart too, Hillman, given my background and the health weight and spin selling and all of that kind of stuff. And so I'm I'm interested to know um, coaching methodology. Just ex explain what you explain what you mean by that, because I think some people don't even understand what coaching really is. <laughs> That, that, well, I, I think you're probably right when you say that, at least through my observations as having been a, a sales management consultant for the last 50 or 20 years. That's that's definitely the case. You know, you mentioned spin, which is, uh, you know, for those who aren't familiar, it's a sales methodology. And um, mm -hmm. if we're just breaking down methodology to state the obvious, this is the path that you can provide to an individual to um, allow them to understand, given certain scenarios, what type of behavior and what types of uh, uh, skills to use to move something towards a, an outcome that's desirable. In sales, that outcome is either a quick disqualification or obviously moving someone through the next stage in your funnel all the way along that path towards close. So, you know, organizations spend a lot of money, spend a lot of time. Sales managers mm -hmm. and leadership have typically invested some energy in understanding one of the myriad sales methodologies that they can apply to their team. Some folks, I don't advise this, but some folks go the Frankenstein route of, you know, doing a little bit of this one and a little bit of that one, and then a little bit of their homebrew one. You know, that's not advantageous, but that's a different conversation. Um, and then, you know, you, you kind of abdicate that role of accountability and moving performance and coaching those gaps between where someone is today and where you'd like them to be. You abdicate that to a frontline manager who typically is that person who has been promoted to their Peter principle, you know, their, their, yeah. their uh, least level of qualification and provided mm -hmm. little to no coaching for themselves, training for themselves or guidance. So what I mean to say is that having both coaching rigor, coaching process, coaching systems, as well as a co coaching methodology actually can have a significant impact on revenue vis-a-vis -vis performance. I mean, if you were able to say something you know, as just an example, if I told you that you could, um, you, you know, just by having a conversation with your bank account, you could increase it by 20 to 60%, yeah. you'd probably start talking to your bank account every day, wouldn't you? <laughs> 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 and that's what your salespeople are. And yet we're not doing anything, typically, we're not doing anything with uh, significance or rigor with respect to uh, helping them move the needle on, on the things that matter for the company. Yeah, no, you're 100 percent correct. I mean, obviously, you know, people um, often get cre uh, promoted into sales management positions because they were a top salesperson or whatever. And and as you say, not only are they not even taught, you know, basic management skills, but no way are they uh, are they taught how to coach. And that's the and that's part of the problem. Then is a lot of people's experience of coaching or their perception of goes back to high school, you know, somebody standing on the sideline shouting and uh, telling you exactly what to do. And, and that's not what real coaching is all about. Yeah, that's, that's absolutely right. <laughs> you say that and I actually got a little, uh, the, the hives started coming out. <laughs> my, my own athletic experiences as a, a competitive swimmer, I played football, played basketball too. Um, and I was lucky to have some great coaches, but I did have some that resembled that remark, or there was uh, the woman who taught me piano who was constantly banging a ruler on, on the top of the piano too. That was another type of a coach. Um, so, so yeah, and, and you know what's, what's challenging about it, John, really, is that good coaches have typically come from people who were good coaches. It's hard, mm -hmm. at least traditionally. I mean, even if you think about this athletically, right, there are coaches who are known for having coaching trees. You know, one is uh, out there near you, um, you know, just a little bit north in San Francisco. You had Bill Walsh, who was a coach of the San Francisco 49ers football team. And there are probably 30 coaches who have either come from his assistant coaches or being assistants to their coaches and so on and so on and so on. And that all stemmed, forgive the pun, from his 
coaching rigor and the fact that he was able mm. to kind of espouse that. But it, it's you don't go to coaching school in business. You know, even as you're working yeah. through your MBA, it's hard enough to find programs these days that are postgraduate that talk about sales, much less sales coaching. Right. Mm -hmm. And so this, this is where I just see this immense opportunity. A lot of folks, uh, instead of looking to coaching as a means of solving sales problems or creating sales strategy or competitive advantage, a lot of folks go to tech. Yeah. And, you know, I, I don't want all of my clients uh, on, on the closed loop side throwing darts at me going, yeah, don't tell them that. That's what they're supposed <laughs> to do. You know? <laughs> but, if, if you look at that world of B2B SaaS, it's pretty huge. You know, and if you look at that world of sales enablement tools, it's pretty big. But um, the, the reason is that's the solve. That's what people are looking for. It's like, oh, well, I'll automate this little thing or I'll, yes. I'll you know, get locked into this process. And um, not to say that they are not mutually exclusive. Uh, I will say no. that each better um, when combined, right? Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, I mean, one of the things, and I think you, you've obviously, you know, come across this as well is, yeah, is throwing technology at things. So if you don't have, if you don't have rigor already, if you don't have well-defined process, uh, you bring in technology. If you've crappy processes, all you get is automated crappy processes, right? You know, you don't <laughs> actually get anything, you benefit from it. Uh, and I think that's the point is you have to before you put technology on something you have to cover the fundamentals and make sure what what is the technology actually going to enable what behavior is um, it going to enable what behavior is it going to reinforce i love that you're saying this too few people take this approach you know it's it's interesting um i had a client years ago who said that you know tech can just amplify the terrible if you haven't yeah. really focused on what it is that you're trying to do and, and what I often advise companies to do is figure it out an analog first. Do it in analog mm -hmm. until you've broken it. Do it in a spreadsheet. You, you'd be surprised what a spreadsheet can accomplish across the, the, the panoply of things that software can do. Yeah. Spreadsheet can do a lot of things. Now, is it elegant? Is it pretty? Is it automated? Not necessarily, but do it there until it's broken, until, until you figured out the workflow, until you've got people accountable, until you've seen the impact. And then you'll have much more clarity with respect to what kind of tech is going to make sense. And you know, that's the same thing that we talk about with respect to coaching. If you first and foremost identify coaching rigor and what that looks like in your organization, a coaching methodology that everybody, whether it's leadership coaching, management, management coaching, ICs, ICs coaching themselves, something that the entire organization has gotten behind and is embodying, and then begin to track that. And then once you break that mm. cracking and realize that you've got an opportunity for collaboration or you've got an opportunity for coaching plans or you've got an opportunity for coaching playbooks or you've got an opportunity to do some level of training around coaching specific items to those teams, that's when you come to something like a coach CRM and you're able to take that and make that software actually put it on rails. But don't start there. Start with the rigor of doing this stuff in analog and having consistency in meetings. Yeah, and and I think the rigor point is something that's really, really important that I'd like to underline a couple of uh, times because let's face it, if, if people take cues from their manager, their leaders. So if if I say to you, if I say to you, Helm, we're like, oh, we're going to do some coaching. I'm going to coach you from now on, right? Um, let's put Thursday on our calendar here and it's going to be a coaching session. We're not going to talk about it. We're just going to coach. And then, you know, we do the first one and it's fine. And then the following week, I'm like, oh, sorry, Hill, and something came up this week, uh, but we'll move it to next week. And before long, you're going, okay, this isn't really that important. Yeah, that's exactly right. I was talking to a team of managers. Uh, I, I think I mentioned when we were in the green room that I was just out in <laughs> San Diego yesterday, talking to a team of managers who have just brought on Coach CRM. They're very excited about it. And, you know, one of the questions that they had, 14 managers, right? Uh, they said, so Hillman, you know, what should the cadence be? You know, how often should we do, should this be a weekly thing? And should it be 45 minutes to an hour? Should it be, you know, which is a little bit excessive for just a coaching mm -hmm. conversation. Should it be mm -hmm. bi-weekly? Should it be this? Should it be that? The other? I said, look, it took you all a good six weeks just to get this meeting on the calendar to get us all in the room, which means you're busy. I said, you mm -hmm. have to, at least early days, you have to pick off what you can be consistent with. Because if you yeah. put, just to your point, John, if you put a meeting on the calendar with Hillman, every Thursday at 8 a.m. for an hour and you make the first two and then you start missing them, I'm going to start slipping because the indication is that it's not important, 
right? Yeah. And so it, it's just like with anything, you know, I, I started a habit of journaling, right? I was just, I <laughs> actually have this thing sitting here. Um, I, I started a habit of journaling a number of years ago. And do you know what my commitment was? My commitment was to write two lines the next day, not even for a week. I started off mm -hmm. doing 21 days of just committing to every evening going, I'll write two lines the next day. Because I knew that was a commitment I could keep. That was something that I could not right. say to myself, like, I just don't have the energy. I'm too tired or it's early in the morning. Mm -hmm. I got to run somewhere. I could keep that commitment. And then I built upon that. And now I've got a journaling habit that I've had for a number of years, right? So you, you've got to just, you have to have, you have to be realistic. <clears throat> you have to also realize that coaching, you know, when you, when you develop and pull in a methodology, a good methodology that's built for sales teams mm -hmm. today, this is not narrative. You know, a lot of times I'm sure there are people who are listening to this who are just like, oh my gosh, I've got. 10 direct reports, which is probably two more than I really should be handling right now. And I've got mm -hmm. all these other things I got to do. And we're meeting on Zoom and I got these blah, 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 blah. And I don't want to sit down and have to talk to John for half an hour about what's going on in his life. <laughs> and, and that's the problem. Is it, it takes a lot of energy, right? I want to do this every yeah. week. And it's, so, so, so people don't do it because they don't understand how to derive the most critical challenges, stay focused on a single challenge, move that thing towards successful resolution. And then once you've created this kind of success, what happens? You know, that dopamine hits for the individual contributor mm -hmm. or for the person who you're helping. Yeah. And that thing happens to you where you feel as though you're moving someone along the line. The team suddenly rises, right? And, and everybody's happy. And the beauty of that is you create these successful interactions and the successful um, engagement as a team. And if you, you know, you can go back to marginal gains theory or whatever your, whatever your jam is, you know what I mean? And, <laughs> and what happens is people buy into it. And then I'm looking forward to the coaching conversations. Then you find that your ICs are actually surfacing things to you and saying, look, I've worked through because they understand the methodology because you've done this mm -hmm. with rigor. I know what you're going to ask me, John. And so here's what I've done in preparation. Now you're sitting there fielding something from your standpoint and your level of expertise and from your, 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 your pedestal, for lack of a better term, of um, seniority. And you're actually able to collaboratively work together in a way that's highly engaging and highly productive. Yeah, no, I, I, I totally, I totally agree with you. And maybe just explain to people, or maybe give an example of people how, what does coaching, really good coaching, look like? Because again, like I said, people often think coaching is telling, and it's saying, okay, yeah. you know, here's the things you need to work on, blah blah blah. And here's how you should do it, and all of that. But, but it, it's, it's that's not the correct approach. That's not the correct approach. It's not the most effective approach. It's a, it's a, it's an right. approach to exhaust yourself. Imagine if you had seven mm -hmm. to ten direct reports, and every week you've got to tell them what to do. Like that's not mm -hmm. great. And let, let's start. Let's start backwards for just a second and understand yeah. that coaching begins with the hire. You have to mm -hmm. identify. You have to know whether you're using something formally, like a formal, formal, like a hiring rubric or like a competency matrix. Somehow you've got to understand who is the best person to put in the seat. Right. And you have to understand the skills that they have acquired in coming to your organization that they must have. And then the skills that you can develop going forward. The second piece here is you've got to understand the difference between coaching and training. Coaching mm -hmm. happens after you train somebody. You cannot coach someone on something you haven't trained them to do. So a lot of the times this stuff becomes exhaustive for a manager because you're teaching. And that's a wholly different function. It's an important management mm -hmm. function. That's not coaching, so let's not get that mistaken. And that's also something that you can often do in mass. You can also often do um, uh, asynchronously. There are myriad ways to teach these days, right? Mm -hmm. So let's say that aside. Now, how do you go about coaching? I'm a huge fan. You know, I, I wrote a book called uh, "The Five Secrets of a Sales Coach," along with the other seven books that you mentioned, <laughs> um, which are not about coaching but are around sales management and sales execution. Um, I'm a huge fan of acronyms. And so let's take the word coach and turn this into an acronym. Mm -hmm. so right. The first thing that you have to do as a manager is to identify the challenge and the single challenge. This is instead of coming to John and throwing spaghetti at him and going, hey, John, so, you know, on your calls, you're not uncovering pain. You start them a little funky. You're not doing a great agenda at the end. You don't have any good next steps. And frankly, the way your posture is on these calls isn't quite great. Good luck with that. Right. Now, what's that going to do? <laughs> You know what I mean? Like how, that's not successful. Now you've just kind of stuck your thumb on John's head and, and there's nothing that's going to come of it. It's like throwing mm -hmm. 10 tennis balls at somebody and asking, expecting them to catch them all and do something with them, right? Um, so, so we identify the one challenge that is the lowest hanging opportunity with the highest value impact. And often that one challenge could be something that kind of is a tipping point for that person's success 
and that person's opportunity to have performance, uh, to, to increase their performance, right? So once we as a manager have identified that on our own, the second thing we must do on our own before we go engage somebody in a conversation is outline, here's the O, outline the path mm -hmm. to success. So mm -hmm. it is assumptive that you are in this role because you can identify challenges and you know what resolution looks like. The easiest mm -hmm. path, figuring out what that outline of the path to success is, is just to reverse engineer. If John's not uncovering pain, let's say the day that he is uncovering pain, what got him there? Oh, he understood what the pain questions were. He role played those pain questions. He figured them out per persona. And he had some kind of rigor with which he was going to do this and hold himself accountable in every conversation. Just that simple. This isn't a homework mm -hmm. exercise. It's going to take you hours, right? Now you go yeah. and you engage in the conversation. The goal of the conversation is not to convince the person that your path to success is the right one. You have that so that you understand in the conversation how to guide someone where they need to go. And what does that guidance look like? It looks exactly like every sales discovery conversation you had that got you this job right. in the first place, right? You're active listening, you're uncovering pain, you're helping someone to come to their own conclusion that this is something that they need to resolve. And here's the mm -hmm. interesting thing, for anyone who's got kids, if you often, instead of you being the person who comes in and goes, you know, Timmy, you didn't clean your room. That means here's, here's, <laughs> here's what's gonna happen to you. You say, Timmy, you know, you, you don't, you seem to be having a problem cleaning your room on Saturday mornings. What are we gonna <laughs> do about that? And then Timmy comes up with a great solution that you can hold Timmy accountable to, right? right. Same thing with your reps. You know, you, you bring it to him, you say, John, I'm seeing you're having struggling, you know, come, uncovering pain, what's happening there. Help me understand what you've done to prepare for your calls. You're guiding this conversation in a way where through the A, which is the action plan that you're co-creating, COA, right? Mm -hmm. Challenge, outline, action plan. You come up with some sort of an OKR, some sort of a smart goal, some sort of choose your acronym, whatever it is that you like to use in your organization, but something that is clear and measurable and something that yeah. is finite and they can do it in the next day, the next week, depending upon the velocity of their sales process, right? And then there's two other pieces, right? The next C in coach is consequences. And I don't want that to sound draconian. Think of consequences right. as more along the lines of like, what what are, what, what can result, result in this? If you do yeah, nothing, sure. what will the result be? If you do something, what will the result be? And having a conversation right. about that. So you don't feel like you're chasing someone down at the very end. And then the last piece is the H. That's how we hold ourselves and our, our teammate accountable. And it's dual accountability. You want the mm -hmm. person to know that you're in this with them. You're going to provide resources and access and feedback, and you will be present and consistent. And then the expectation is that they're going to follow up on the action plan. So that's the COACH of coach. Start with something that simple, which I'm sure you could easily see how that could drop into, you know, an analog means of being able to uh, begin coaching and, and talk to your team, small bites, 15 to 20 minute increments to move the needle significantly. Yeah, no, I love that. That's a, that's a great, that's a great framework. And because here's one of the other things I just wanted to ask you about at the end here is uh, what you outlined there, you know, find something, focus in and it's something small. There's another thing that I think a lot of managers or leaders fall into this trap of is they look at all the things that you're good at, even the things that you're great at, and then they go, oh, okay. And then they focus on the things that you're not, you're really maybe yeah. bad at that you're probably never going to be any good at. And they focus yeah. there instead of going, let's figure out a way of maybe getting rid of that bit or having some whatever. And let's focus on, let's focus on strengths, but we're terrible. We like focus in on, we want to fix something. Yes, that's, that's absolutely true. Instead of shoring up the muscle that's working, you know what I mean? We, we, we forsake that for the one that has never been developed in the first place. So, and that goes back to hiring. You know, the other thing that I'll say with respect to that, John, is people, uh, this is this is another way to quickly exhaust your managers. Coaching the lowest, the lowest uh, performer, right? You coach the people yeah. who have the highest opportunity to do better. And mm -hmm. I, I'm not saying this in a way of segregating your team, but there's some folks who are just sure. going to wash out, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and you get some performance metrics on that. You get them trained up. You see if they've got competency and capability. And if they don't, you move them out and they'll be happier. You'll be happier. And life goes on. Yeah. Coach the people who are in that middle rung who might have peaks and valleys of success, but just haven't quite broken through. That's where the gold is. That's where that yeah. real revenue opportunity exists inside your organization, your sales org. Yeah. So at the end of the day, I mean, it all really boils down to taking a systematic approach to to this. And and I agree with you. I think coaching. I think if 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 you bring in coaches like yourself, or you you know teach people how to coach properly I, I agree i think it's the the greatest revenue supplier um all of hillman's information is going to be below this video but please before
before we go, tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do. Yeah, I'm the co-founder of Coach CRM, which is the first sales uh, coaching platform. Um, our goal is to help make frontline managers heroes, create some transparency as it moves up through the chain, through leadership, and ultimately drive individual and team performance. You reach us at, uh, like you said, it'll, it'll be in the show notes, but uh, coachcrm.com. You can go there to get a free trial. Check it out. Excellent. Listen, thanks again, Hillman, and thank you all for watching and listening. I'll see you all again soon. Thank you.